Well, it's good to see you tonight, and I want to welcome you to the 42nd commencement ceremony of Arlington Baptist School. We are so glad that you are here with us, and uh, we're thankful that you came out tonight and uh, to witness this incredible event. What a great group of seniors, and we're thankful for them. We're thankful what God's going to do in their lives, and we want this night to honor and glorify the Lord. I will say this just before we have a word of prayer that uh, the service tonight and this commencement exercise is on Facebook Live. So if you have some family that would like to see that and you would let them know that, uh, that would be fine. Just to let them know that, they would go to Arlington Baptist Church and they would be able to see that through there. But we do want to let you know about that. But let's ask the Lord to bless. Give us a great evening tonight. Would you join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, you're very good to us and we're thankful for your many blessings. I'm so thankful for this senior class. Tonight, Father, we witness the achievements that they've made, the work that they've done, and we give honor to whom honor is due. But we always know that the glory always goes to your precious son who loved us and died for us. Father, I ask that this night would be one that would honor and glorify your son. Father, I ask that this night would be one that we remember for many years and that we would rejoice in your many blessings. Thank you again for this class. I thank you for our school, the great work you've done. And we ask now that tonight, that everything we say would point to a risen Savior who is coming again. Bless these seniors. Use them tremendously. Give us a great evening tonight. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing, and uh, we'll be having the pledges now, and Jordan, if you'll come. Please join me in saying the pledges. Gentlemen, please remove your hat, caps. Pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pledge to the Christian flag. Pledge your allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for his kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty to all who eat. You may be seated. Good evening. Each year, the senior class claims a Bible verse that the students wish to emulate. At this time, the class of 2017 would like to recite that verse. Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Amen. There are 10 seniors sitting before you this evening. Actually, they're not before you, they are kind of down here on the platform, aren't they? They're down here before you this way. Each one is unique in regards to their gifts, ambitions, goals, and dreams for their future. Through much prayer and hard work, these seniors have reached this pinnacle in their lives. God has truly blessed each senior and orchestrated this moment, this point in time, to allow each one to be here anticipating graduation. Tonight, they will be recognized for their accomplishments and will be issued an Arlington Baptist High School Diploma. Therefore, acknowledging these students is very appropriate and meaningful for all gathered here this evening. Attending this graduation ceremony are the people who care the most and have in various ways invested in the lives of the seniors. Hence, it is equally important to acknowledge the parents, in particular, who were determined to give their children the very best education possible. 
According to God's word, parents are ultimately responsible for providing a godly education for their children. Understanding this God-given responsibility has been a motivating factor for many parents here tonight. Whether you enroll your children in Christian school or homeschool, it involves a commitment to excellence in education. This commitment and pursuit for an excellent education, as you know, is not easy. It involves many sacrifices, prayers, and sometimes faith in God to do the impossible. Through it all, these parents never gave up. They sympathized over failures. They rejoiced over the victories. They encouraged and they loved unconditionally. Because of these faithful parents, there are 10 seniors sitting here this evening awaiting graduation. Parents, your investment in providing an excellent education for your sons and daughters is acknowledged and validated this evening. Now you can experience the fruit of all your labors. The class of 2017 would like to express our love and gratitude to our parents for all they have done and for the sacrifices they have made to bring us to this day of achievement. Printed in your programs, you will find each senior's individual expressions of thanks to the most important people in their lives. At this time, the senior class would like to take this opportunity to recognize the honor our parents Will all the parents of the class of 2017 please stand? You may be seated. This year's salutatorian entered Arlington Baptist School at the beginning of her junior year. She came to us from Nigeria, and American English was not her first language. However, she learned quickly, and through hard work and diligence, she has, she has earned the second highest grade point average in her class. She graduates this evening with a grade point average of 3.63. Her high, high academic marks was rewarded earlier this year when she was inducted into the National Honor Society. In addition to her academic accomplishments, she performed as a vocalist at this year's ACSI Fine Arts Competition in the vocal ensemble and solo categories. She used her love for music to glorify God as she sang a solo in our recent spring concert. Although intense in her studies, she is always quick to return a smile. She will be attending the University of Baltimore this fall, where she will pursue a career in medicine. It is my privilege to introduce our salutatorian for the class of 2017, Ms. Amire India Chingyu Hold on, hold on, hold on. Chingye Baru. There you go. Good evening, pastors, Pastor Campbell, Pastor, Pastor Skelly, administration faculty, parents, family, and friends, and fellow graduates. Welcome to the commencement of the class 2017 as we celebrate the end of our high school year and the beginning of the next chapter in our lives. I would like to thank everyone for being in attendance this evening. You all have had a profound impact on the development of students who will be graduating tonight. Your strength and, your, and support have helped us reach this goal. Tonight, as we find ourselves on the brink of graduation, I ask my fellow graduates to think back to August 2015, when we walked into Arlington Baptist Schools as juniors. At that time, we had no way of knowing in what condition we would be sitting here on this day. Since then, we have made unexpected friendship, faced obstacles that threatened to crush us, laughed until we cried, overslept, and underslept. 
Our presence here tonight clearly reveals that all our hard work and stress has paid off. We did it on the way. We were touched by amazing friends, inspirational teachers, and others who were just done word awesome. During our high school years, we have been shaped into the unique people we are today. The only reason why trouble did not tear us apart or make us lose faith in, is the fact that our hope is in the Lord. There were times when this class could have gone to pieces, given up, or simply moved on. But because we trusted the Lord, we were able to make the best of our high school years. We conquered not only as a class, but also as individuals. We brought home awards, trophy, and made a difference in our community through fellowship, community service, and worship. We also pitched in to raise money for our senior trip. We never could have succeeded in this endeavors without unity. We were able to become something more than a group of individuals traveling to the same destination. We learned to travel with the same purpose to do everything for God's glory. Through God's grace, we were able to renew our strength in times of trouble in order to mount up with wings as eagles. We, the Arlington Baptist School class of 2017, are a powerhouse of innovation and creativity. This group of graduates you see today is not just a class, but a family of friends who have laughed together, cried together, and prayed together. Although our times in high school has come to an end, the relationship God has built and the memories we have made will never be erased. The ride has been great, but it is time for us to open a new chapter in our lives. So thank you everyone for helping us reach the next stage of our journey. Thank you.
So now I'm going to give my testimony that about, about my appreciation for God and what he has done in my life. I knew of God since I was able to comprehend the world around me, but I became aware of God's great embrace when I was seven years old. Since that day, I surrendered my soul to Christ and have been an avid follower since. I have gone through a successful heart surgery, scoliosis, or spine curving treatment, pneumonia, and many other heart health and life problems. Through hard times and good, he has been there, even when I am not totally sure of myself or my faith. He has blessed me with a beautiful, loving family, a healthy body and mind, and the ability to know him the way I do, and I am forever grateful. I promise to follow him forevermore, and despite my stubborn pride, I will bow to him in the end. Amen. 7.4 billion. That's the number of people on the earth, but I wonder how many of those people are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. At the age of 10, I accepted Christ into my life as my Lord and Savior. I saw my iniquities, I saw my need for salvation, and I took the steps to change my spiritual life. I accepted Christ into my life because the Lord convicted my heart during a sermon in church. I began to see my sin and uncleanliness. After seeing my iniquities, I realized my need for salvation. I realized that I would not go to heaven if I did not accept Christ into my life, that I would surely go to hell for my sins against God. Knowing this, I wanted to be saved. After the sermon, the pastor asked the congregation if anyone wanted to accept Christ. My grandmother turned to me and asked if I wanted to do this, and without hesitation, I said yes. I went up to a minister who asked if, I went up to the minister who asked if I believed that Jesus was born of a virgin birth, I said yes. She then asked if I believe that he is the son of God sent here to die on a cross for our sins, and rose again on the third day. I said yes again. She then brought me to an office in the back, and I said a prayer asking Jesus to come into my life. During this time, tears were streaming down my face because I had realized what a major step I had just taken to have a relationship with God. A few weeks later, I took discipleship classes to learn more about the Savior and Creator of all things. After the discipleship classes, I was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Since the day of accepting Christ, my life hasn't been the same. I now have a relationship with God. I can see his blessings every day in my life. Recently, he has blessed me with the opportunity to further my education at my first choice college, Stevenson University. He has also blessed me with a grant because of my good grades in high school. I have given my worries and concerns over to God, and in return, he has blessed me with more things than I would have ever imagined. When I didn't have faith in myself, he became my courage and my wings. He has carried me through some tough situations. Now it's time for me to share this joy with others and be a shining light to all men as if I were a city sat on a hill that cannot be hidden. Psalm 18.2 says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom will I trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. This Bible verse is a perfect example of who God has been for me since I accepted Christ into my life. I accepted Christ because I saw my iniquities. I accepted Christ because I saw my need for salvation. The result of accepting Christ has forever changed my life and his blessings forever runneth over. I have told you my story, that I am confident in my name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now is your turn to create your story. Are you confident that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If you haven't accepted Christ into your life, I strongly urge you to do so before it's too late. Believe on him and see how your life will change. Thank you. Class of 2017 would like to thank all the past and present administrators, faculty, and staff of Arlington Baptist School for their faithful service to God, which has made our education possible. We know that the labor of love will be rewarded in heaven. We, the senior class, have expressed our gratitude to, the, to them and the printed program, but would also like to thank 
would like to, them to stand up at this time and be recognized. Please stand. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Our valedictorian for the class of 2017 transferred to Arlington Baptist School in 2014 at the beginning of his sophomore year. He transitioned easily and quickly became a leader in the class as evident when he became the class president. He did not take that role lightly and was instrumental in leading his class to raise enough money to go to Disney World on their senior trip. In addition to fulfilling his responsibility as a class officer, he also played on the varsity soccer team and was active in the music program, playing his trumpet for the school band as well as playing for the church orchestra. These time-consuming activities never hindered him from achieving principal's honor roll status for the past three years and being inducted into the National Honor Society in his sophomore year. His leadership skills, attention to details, and friendly nature will allow him to easily transition to Pensacola Christian College, where he plans to pursue a degree in political science. He graduates tonight with a four-year cumulative GPA of 4.31. It is with great pleasure that I introduce the valedictorian for the class of 2017, Mr. Boaz Allen Campbell. Pastor Campbell, Pastor Skelly, administration, faculty, parents, family, friends, and fellow graduates. The Department of Education projects that this year, three and a half million students will graduate from high school. Tonight, 10 more students will be added to this number. Our class, the class of 2017, has come together to write the conclusion in this chapter of our lives. The goal of graduation has been our focus and impetus in this race toward our future. For several years, we laughed, argued, debated, prayed, and reached out to one another, becoming closer friends and growing a deeper faith in Christ. As Isaiah 40:31, our class verse states, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. We eagles took on the challenge, and with God's help, we will finish it tonight. However, we must now step away from the past and step towards the future. We all open a new chapter in our lives tonight. This chapter will determine our destiny for good or bad. As we graduate, we step out into a world that is hostile to, towards Christianity. But we must remember God's promise in Hebrews, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This principle can and will carry us through the challenges of life. One of these upcoming challenges is college. Whether it be dealing with roommates, cramming for a final, or adjusting to the struggles of an independent life, God will be there waiting for us to join him. He will not only help us, but he will guide us through all of life's rugged terrain. As we step out, our faith will be challenged by classmates, professors, friends, coworkers, and family. Therefore, we must be ready to give an answer, as 1 Peter 3.15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We have hope of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ and nobody can take that away from us. We must answer everyone compassionately but firmly knowing that the same God that created the universe is the same God who walks with us and provides us with hope every day. When stepping out into future, we must always do everything for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 emphasizes this point by simply telling us, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. The class of 2017 unapologetically believes in the biblical account of creation. So when believing in creation, we believe that every human being has unique God-given talents, interests, and abilities. Since God gave them to us, we should use them for God. As Pastor Campbell always reminded us, the safest place to be is in the center of God's will. Tonight, we take the next step in God's will for our lives across this stage into our destiny. 
Tonight, the beginning of a new chapter in our life begins. Whether we are going into the field of medicine, government, biology, or technology, we all have a calling to glorify God and serve him with our gifts. Class of 2017, are you ready for the next chapter? It is a little nerve-wracking, but we have God on our side. Romans 8.31 says it best. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Yesterday, many of our seniors were honored for various school accomplishments. At this time, we would like to recognize those students. Students who received class officer awards, please stand. <laughs> students who received athletic achievement awards, please stand. <laughs> students who received service awards, please stand. Students who received awards for academic excellence, please stand. <laughs> Students who received fine arts awards, please stand. <laughs> Students who have received the Meritorious Conduct Award, please stand. Students who are members of the National Honor Society, please stand. <laughs> Students graduating with honors having a cumulative GPA of 3.0 to 3.49 over their four years of high school, please stand. Students graduating with high honors having a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or above over their four years of high school, please stand. The Distinguished Home Scholar Award is presented to the homeschooled student with the highest and most distinguished academic record achieved during their four years in high school. This student has excelled in academics and has been accepted at Capital Technology University in Maryland, where she plans to major in computer engineering. She is a member of the National Society of High School Scholars because of her high GPA. She has consistently maintained an A average all four years of high school. Because of her high degree of academic excellence, she was able to complete several online computer programming courses and was awarded with certifications. Combining her love for art and technology, she applied computer design theories and created an art sculpture which took first place at Arlington Baptist's School Fine Arts Competition. She was also selected as a finalist in the National Northeast Art Competition for the Association of Christian Schools. She has been awarded the Capital Scholars Program, which is a four-year tuition-paid scholarship to her top choice university, which is Capital Technology University. Graduating tonight with an excellent academic record all four years of high school, high honors, and a GPA of 3.9590 verifies the distinguished academic excellence this student has achieved. It is therefore my privilege to present the Distinguished Home Scholar Award of 2017 to Camille Rodney. Citizenship Award. 
This award is presented to the student who has consistently demonstrated the qualities of dependability, leadership, service, and patriotism throughout his stay at Arlington. This award goes to Tyron McKell Horn. The Timothy Award is presented to the senior who has a heart to see souls saved while manifesting a large measure of spiritual growth during her years at Arlington Baptist School. This student has been a source of inspiration to the school in showing forth the love of Christ to fellow students and teachers. This award is presented to Amari Janae Roberts. Pastor P sorry, the Pastor Peter Bissett Award, in loving memory of Pastor Peter Bissett, founder of the Arlington Baptist School, this award is presented by his daughter and her family to the senior whose life shows evidence of faithfulness and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. This senior also has shown continual growth in the knowledge of the Word of God having committed the Word to memory on the basis of Psalm 119.11. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. This award is presented to Boaz Allen Campbell. It is an Arlington tradition that the seniors present a gift to show their appreciation to the school. The class of 2017 is providing $1,000 to go toward the purchase of a new 15 passenger van for the school. This van will benefit every student in the school as they travel on field trips or to athletic games. We know that it will also be used as a vehicle to further the gospel on trips like the X trip or other service trips. We, the senior class, received this Bible one year ago with the charge that we adhere to its guidelines and pattern our lives after Christ by following the precepts and guidelines written herein. It is my privilege to present this Bible on behalf of the class of 2017 with our hope and prayer that the class of 2018 will accept this challenge in the same spirit and leadership of leadership demonstrated by the senior classes of Arlington Baptist School. I am pleased to accept this Bible on behalf of the class of 2018 with the hope and aspiration we will adhere to, the, to its guidelines and pattern our lives after Christ by following the precepts and guidelines written therein. Wonderful. Thank you, men, for doing that. It's my privilege to introduce to you tonight our guest speaker, and I'm thrilled that he could be with us tonight and what a blessing that he will be. I'm thankful for this senior class. We have over 1,300 alumni of Arlington Baptist School, and to know that now we add these 10 to it is quite a wonderful night, and I know you're enjoying it as much as I am. It's our privilege tonight to have Pastor Kurt Skelly with us, and uh, Pastor Skelly and I have been friends for many years. He pastored for many years up in Pennsylvania, and recently uh, became the pastor of Faith Baptist Church down in Fredericksburg, Virginia. What I've always loved about Pastor Skelly is a number of things, but one thing in particular I love is I know he truly, truly loves God's Word and truly loves people. And I think you'll see that tonight. You'll hear that tonight in just a few moments. His style makes him what I believe to be one of the greatest preachers really in our nation. And just the wonderful delivery of it and the way you will leave here saying, man, I want to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I've told him tonight, I said, listen, just give him a challenge. And uh, uh, they're, look, they're used to preaching. 
right? And I want him to give you a good one tonight. I know that he will. And Pastor Skelly and his wife have four children and uh, all grown now, adults, and uh, all serving the Lord. And it's our privilege to have Pastor Skelly with us tonight. I know he's going to be a blessing to you. We give him a warm welcome as he comes to share the word of God with us tonight. Appreciate that, Pastor Campbell. Uh, Pastor Campbell left out the most important part of the introduction, and that is I do have four grown children but I have two grandchildren. And how many other grandparents are in the house? You don't leave that out, do you? So I've got two grandsons, and I'm going to see them tonight uh, about midnight. So I'm looking forward to that. Graduates, thank you for letting me be a part of your big day. I am so excited to be here. It took me three hours to get here to travel like 70 miles through Beltway traffic. So that means I love you, or I'm crazy, or both. And I, I really have been looking forward to being here. I've prayed for you. I will pray for you. And I have been thoroughly impressed tonight with your speeches, with your testimonies, with your demeanor, all of it. You have represented your parents. You have represented the school. And you've represented the Lord well. And if, if, the, if, what, if the way you behave tonight and the testimonies that you've given tonight are a precursor of the way that you're going to live your lives, then I'm encouraged. I really am encouraged. Boaz, uh, I, I just, uh, I, I'm glad to get to know you. With a grade point average that high, I just want to say, I love you, and when you're rich and famous, don't forget about me. <laughs> uh, but I do say, in all seriousness, to each graduate, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And there is nobody like you. When God made you, he threw out the mold. There is not one person in this world like you, and each one of you has a specific job that the Savior has prepared for you. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. God has a specific job for you. Moms and dads, thank you for letting me be a part of your big day. Graduates, please know that this is not only a big day for you, this is a big day for your mom and dad. And I'll tell you why. In many ways, they're excited for you, they're celebrating with you. But if we're honest, moms and dads, days like these come and we don't think that we're prepared to send you off. There's more things we want to tell you. We've told you to look twice before you cross the road. We've told you, you know, to, to wait a half hour before you go swimming, after you eat, and all these things. But there's a million things we want to tell you. There's a million things that run through our minds that we wish we had told you. And so we, what we say tonight is we know that it's God's grace that any one of us goes on to be successful for anything. And so please know that we're praying for you. And please know that we don't feel entirely equipped to send you into a world that's going to try to undo all the things that have been done in your life by faithful moms and dads, by godly pastors, by faithful uh, faculty and staff members, by grandmas and grandpas that have prayed for you, by fellow students that have come alongside of you, please know that the greatest friend you have is the Lord Jesus Christ. And like one of you already said, he will never leave you or forsake you. Years ago, the very first church was the church at Jerusalem. We know that. The church at Jerusalem was pastored by a man by the name of James. You know that too. Uh, the James that pastored the church at Jerusalem was actually the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. How would you like to grow up in the same home as the Lord Jesus Christ? It's bad enough being compared to your older brother or sister. H how about if your older brother or sister never did anything wrong? That's the home in which James grew up. The ironic thing is, the Bible teaches that James did not even believe on the Lord Jesus Christ until after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'll tell you what, when he believed on Christ, he made up for lost time. He became an avid and an ardent follower of Jesus Christ, insofar that he became the first pastor of the church at Jerusalem. And he loved his people. And it was a big church. I mean, this is a big church. It's a wonderful auditorium, but this, this auditorium could not come near to holding the number of people that were in the church at Jerusalem. Remember, 3,000 got saved on one day. The Bible says that thousands were saved after that, and it was James that was the first pastor of that church. Here's what happened. 
After just, just a few years, uh, persecution came to that church and many of those church members were scattered. I mean, they were no longer there in Jerusalem. And in an age when there wasn't email or Snapchat or Facebook or social media or telephone or smoke signals, uh, when people went away, uh, there was no way to know how they were doing. And the only way by which you could contact them was to write them a letter and then hope that that letter eventually arrived at their destination. And that's what happened. Because the people at James's church were scattered. Now here's Pastor James, uh, just like your pastor, who's uh, wondering, boy, are they going to continue on for the Lord? Now that they're leaving my church, now that they're leaving uh, their home area, now that they're going out into that uh, stark, cold world, are they going to live for Jesus Christ? And so what did James do? He wrote them a letter. And in that letter he said, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. And in that letter, we call it the book of James in the Bible, in that letter, uh, James talked to them about a number of things. He said, hey, temptation is coming down the pipeline of your life. You better be ready. He said, hey, listen, don't just talk about living for the Lord. Walk it. Because your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. And he talked about that. Hey, he said, don't be a respecter of persons. He said, make sure you treat everybody the exact same in life. Nobody's better than you. Nobody's worse than you. You hold your head high. Understand that you treat everybody with respect. Uh, 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 James talked about that. Hey, he talked about faith without works is dead. He taught them about, hey, he said, be careful what you say. The tongue, it's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. Therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. And he talked about, hey, be careful how you use your tongue. And then he talked about uh, wisdom. And what wisdom is and how we should have wisdom. And he talked about the trials that come in our life. They, they come from within, inside of us. And so don't be a friend of the world. Uh, to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy with God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift you up. Live a life of humility. But I think of all the things that James talked about in that power-packed five-chapter book in the Bible. I think of all the things that James talked about, I think James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17, might be the most powerful. And what I'm going to say to you ten graduates, you three lovely young ladies and you seven men, what I'm going to say to you young people tonight is what James told some people that graduated from his church. Some things that James said to some people that went off from his church to, to other places. And he was concerned about them. And he said some things to them that he never wanted them to forget. If you have a Bible tonight and you'd like to look on with me, it's James chapter 4. And look at verse uh, 13, please. James chapter 4 and verse 13. The Bible says these words. Go to now. That's just a fancy, old-fashioned way of saying, hey, 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 listen up. Go to now. Hey, 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 listen up. Ha has seniors, have you ever had someone say that to you? Have you ever been zoned out and had one of these respected faculty and staff members say, hey, 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 listen up? Or maybe a mom or dad say, hey, 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 listen up. Because that's what Pastor James is saying in James 4 and verse 13. Hey, 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 listen up. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a city and, and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what should be on the morrow. Look at the question. Look at it in verse 14. For what is... Your life. Hey, graduates, do you know something? That's the only time in the Bible that question is asked. What is your life? Because you better figure out that question right now. Because you're about to live your life now in a way that you've never lived it before. 
in, in a place that you've never lived before. With a freedom you've never had before. You better understand who you are. What is your life? And then he gives us the answer. What is your life? It is even, watch this, it is even a vapor that, that appeareth for a little time and then banisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and, and do this or that. But, but now, you rejoice in your boastings. All, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Hey, graduates, I want to give you three thoughts tonight. I never want you to forget what I'm going to say. I want to give you three thoughts tonight. Father, would you help me as I share your word with these graduates? Lord, they may forget who I am and they may forget the events of this evening and they may forget many things as the years unfold. But Father, I pray that in these few moments you would emblazon upon our minds and upon our hearts this message about life. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would do something in our lives tonight that would be significant, long-lasting, yea, even permanent. I pray for your special blessing upon these ten tonight. Bless them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Three thoughts, here they are. Number one, I want you to see in verse 13 what I call the plans we make. Would you see it? Verse 13, the plans we make. I, I just met the graduates here a few moments before the, uh, the graduation ceremony. I had the opportunity to meet them out in the hallway. and uh, They were lined up in alphabetical order. And so I, 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 I walked down the line. I just uh, shook hands with some of them and congratulated each one of them. And I asked several of them, hey, what are you going to do with your life? Where, where are you going? And some of them glowingly said, well, I'm going to this college. Or I feel as if I'm going to pursue this with my life. And hey, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I wasn't nearly as organized as some of you guys are. When I was a graduate from high school, I just didn't know what I was going to do tomorrow. Some of you got your whole lives figured out, you know. You, you've been accepted to college. I didn't even know, know if I was going to go to college. I was hoping to be a swing shift manager at McDonald's over the years. I mean, I just didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, you guys seem to have things, some things figured out. Hey, it's not wrong to plan. And we have all kinds of tools by which to help ourselves plan life today. I mean, we, we have Google calendars, and we got our whole lives on a cell phone. I, I can get my email, I, I can get my, I have my Google documents, I have my Google Sheets, I have the, the internet, I got Wikipedia. Who else, who needs a teacher when you got Wikipedia? I got it all right there on, on, on my phone. But let me just say this, plans by themselves don't make you successful. And what was happening in James chapter 4 and verse 13 is, is James had heard that his people were making plans, but, but their plans were, at, were, were leaving one important element out. No, notice verse 13. What were the plans they were making? Watch, watch first of all. They were planning what I call the, the, the wares of their life. Uh, go to now. Hey, hey, listen up. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow will go into a certain, such and such a, a city. Hey, these were people that knew where they were going. These were people that had identified a place where, where they were going to move and a place where they were going to be successful, a college town or, or a place where they'd set up shop and start a business. Hey, they knew exactly where they were going in life. Well, we love to talk to people that know where they're going in life. Boy, they knew the name of the city. They knew the address. They had it on their Google map. I mean, they were all ready. But can I just say this? When you plan the wares of your life outside of God's will, it can get you into a world of hurt. Just ask Lot about that. Hey, Lot, what land do you want? Well, I want the well-watered plains towards Sodom. You know, Lot maybe should have prayed about that thing. Maybe Lot should have asked Uncle Abraham about that thing. Maybe Lot should have deliberated about that thing. But Lot, he just made a choice based upon how good it looked. But nothing can't be wrong if it looks so good. And let me just say this, graduates. Don't make wear decisions in your life without getting God in on that wear decision. 
But not only were they planning their wheres, watch this, they were planning their whens. W-H-E-N. Go to now. Hey, hey, listen up. Go to now. Ye that say today. That, that's a time term. Or, or tomorrow. That, that's a time term. We will go into such and such a city. We'll continue there a year. That's a time term. And buy and sell and get gain. Hey, they were planning the wares of their life. But they were planning the whens of their life. Hey, I control the time of my life. I can, I can decide when I'm going to go. Hey, I might go today. I might go tomorrow. I might stay there for a year. Hey, after all, I've got all the time in the world. Do you? I was in my eighth grade classroom at Martin Kellogg Middle School in Newington, Connecticut. I was sitting in Mr. Vincenzo's classroom. I'll never forget the announcement made by Mr. Bottaglieri our vice principal of our public middle school. When he made the ominous announcement, he said, uh, students, I regret to inform you that your fellow student, Ricky Kimball, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky lived just up the street from me. I, I lived on Dowd Street in Newington. I was at 18 Dowd Street. That's down this end of the street. And Ricky, he lived up at this end of the street. And we, we all love Ricky. Ricky was the most popular kid in our school. Ricky was the best basketball player in our school. I had just played basketball at Ricky's driveway. He had a basketball hoop in his driveway. I had just been there just the other day. I regret to inform you that Ricky Kimball has died. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, don't, I can't even describe to you the way I felt. This, this eighth grade boy, what, what do you mean he died? No, no, young people don't die. Old, old people die. Young, well, Rick, Ricky, 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 he's athletic. Ricky, he's, he's healthy. Ricky, he... You know what I learned that day? I learned that we don't control the winds of our life. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And listen, we live our lives as a tale that's told... Boy, the only day that we have to serve God is today. That's it. We don't control the winds of our life. I was in Bible college several years later as a 17-year-old freshman. No cell phones back in those days. How, how many remember pre-cell phone? Okay. People did things like this when they walked around. Now people do this when they drive. And they're in front of me at the red light. And they won't go when the light turned green. Go! Ah! I was in my dorm room and the knock came to my dorm room. I went to the door and the fellow college student said, Kurt, you, you have a phone call down in the laundry room. They called on the pay phone. Ask your parents what that is. It's in the history books. I went down to the pay phone. I picked up the, the, the receiver and a friend of mine at another Bible college was calling me. Kurt, have you heard the news? What, what, what news? Uh, about Terry. Terry. Terry is the best girl in our youth group going up. Terry. She was the most energetic, outgoing, vivacious uh, young lady in our youth. The most godly young lady we knew. She would have received the Christian Character Award at graduation. Matter of fact, she did at our high school graduation. Uh, Terry was one year older than I. She was a sophomore at another Bible college. Uh, hey, have you heard about Terry? No, no, what happened to Terry? It was a Wednesday night on which I received the phone call. Kurt, Terry was traveling home from church tonight with a group of other college students. and The Jeep in which she was riding collided head on with a, a tree. And Kurt, I don't know how to tell you this, but... but but Terry died tonight. And once again, poignantly, I was reminded that we don't control the winds of our life. Only one life, and so soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. The plans we make, here are people that erroneously thought that they could, they could control the where choices of their life, and they could control the, the when choices of their life. But watch this third one in verse 13. Not only were they choosing their, their, their wares 
and they were choosing their, their whens. But what, watch verse 13 one last time. The Bible says, we will go into such and such a city and we will continue there a year and we will buy and we will sell and we will get gain. They thought that they could control the whys of their life. W-H-Y. You know what these people were living for in James 4 and verse 13? You know what they were living for? This. Boy, I'll tell you what, we can go to this city. That's a great economic opportunity. We can buy, we can sell, but hey, it. we can get gain. Hey, we can make it, we can kill it. Can I just say this, graduates? You better live your life for something more than money. You better live your life for something more than stuff. Because one day you're going to stand before Jesus Christ and nothing else will matter. The Bible says, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money, it's the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Hey, Timothy, live for stuff that will outlive you. That's why I say to you, graduates, live for stuff that will outlive you. Take heed and beware of covetousness. That's what Jesus said. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. I don't care what kind of car you drive one day or how fancy your clothes are or how big your house is. A life that's not lived in the will of God is worthless. Man, make sure that you know what you know. The plans we make. Watch this, number two. The part we miss. That's verse 14. You know why they were making the plans in verse 13? Because they missed the part that he shared in verse 14. You know not what should be on tomorrow. You're making all these plans. You don't even know what tomorrow's going to bring. Hey, 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 listen up. Go to now. Hey, you're making all these plans, and you don't even know what you're going to do tomorrow morning. You don't even know if you're going to have your bowl of Captain Crunch. <laughs> so here's what he says. What is your life? Here's the part we miss. What is your life? And he gives us three things. Here it is, ready? What is your life? It is even a vapor. Say that with me. It is even a like the mist. Like the mist. My brother and I were raised by a single mom. Praise God for single moms. Faithful single mom. Taking me to Sunday school. Loving me. Teaching me about Jesus. And my mother would get up every morning and she'd make herself some tea. She put that, that, that tea kettle on the, on the stove. It was one of those whistling teapots. You'll find that in a history book right next to pay telephones. <laughs> Before microwaves. She put it on the stove. My brother and I, we had no video games. We had nothing else to do, so we'd watch the, we'd watch the teapot. Yeah, we did. We wait for that. To, we wait for that, that steam to start coming out, and to, when the steam started coming out with sufficient force, it would whistle, and we we know the tea was. And then we'd we'd wa- we'd we'd have a contest to see who could see how high the steam went. Yeah, yeah, we were those kids. I tell you what, you know, we'd watch it, we'd watch it, boy, it'd billow out of that, billow out. We'd watch it, and what? Then it's gone. Man, it's there, and that, and that, and God said, "That's your life." God said, that's your life. Your life is fragile. Your life is fragile. It's here. It's gone. What what is your life? It's even a vapor. Watch this. Number two, that appears for a little time. Your life is fragile. Your life is fleeting. It's fleeting. Do you know that if you live a normal life, 70 years, three score and 10, do you know if you live a normal life, you live about 25,000 days? That's not a whole lot of time. I'm 50 years old. If my life were a baseball diamond, I'm sliding into third base right now. Let me just tell you, I stumbled around second. Your life is fleeting. There was a girl in our high school. I I taught at a Christian school uh, years ago in Connecticut. One of my first jobs, I taught as a Christian school as a a 24-year-old kid, taught high school English. And I, I, I would walk into school early in the morning, and there was always a girl there. Her name was Mindy, 
And Mindy would sit on the front steps of the, of the school and she'd just sit there. And the, these kids would walk into school and Mindy would do this. She was a sophomore in high school. She'd go. One day I said, Mindy, why, why do you do that? She said, oh, Pastor Skelly, I've been coming to the school for years. These, 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 these fourth graders, it was like just yesterday, they were kindergartners. And they grow up so quickly. Oh, Mindy, by the way, she's 42 today. She's 42 today. That's life. And yesterday I was a graduate. And yesterday I proposed to my wife. And yesterday I held my firstborn son in my arms. And yesterday, yesterday I attended kindergarten graduation. Yesterday. Man. And I'm just telling you something. That's life. What is it? It's fragile. What is it? It's fleeting. What is it? It's final. It vanishes away. And you don't get another shot at it. There, there's no mulligans. Uh, there, there's no rewind button. It's not a video game. You, you can't restart it. Man, what's done is done. You've lived 17 years. you lived 18 years. You can't go back and do it again. Do you understand that? What is written is written. And there's life, and it's one shot, and it's yours. What are you going to do with it? Man, live it for Christ. The plans we make, the part we miss. Watch this, number three, and lastly. I call this the, the, the pride, the pride we maintain. Oh, my. You'd think, Pastor Campbell, that once I explain to somebody what life is, and once I explain to somebody that it's short and that the only life that matters is the life for God. You would think that that would be enough, but, but here's what was happening with these people. Uh, they, they knew what life was, and the Bible says, for that you ought to say, that means they weren't saying this, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. You know what James is saying? Listen to me. You know what James is saying? James is saying, you know what? You know better. You know better. And can I just say this? Graduates, you know better. Unto whomsoever much is given shall be much required. You know better. And these people that knew better, that had sat, that, that, that sat under the ministry of Pastor James, they knew better. The Bible says, you ought to be saying, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But they weren't saying that. You know what I call that? The pride of assuming. The pride of assuming that my life belongs to me. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? You're not your own. You're not your own. You don't own you. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God uh, with your body, with your spirit. They belong to God. You're bought with the price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. The pride of assuming. Uh, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now, you rejoice in your boastings. Listen, look, look, look at me. Now you rejoice in your boastings. So not only, not only were they proud in that they were assuming their life belonged to them, but watch this, they were proud in boasting about what they could do. Now here it is. Every good thing about you, God put in you. That mental ability that you have those athletic abilities that you have, that personality, those special gifts, that uniqueness about you. You know what God did? He poured that into you. Now what you do with it is your gift to him. But the Bible says, now you rejoice in your boastings. They were taking everything God had given to them and they were boasting about it. Look at what I can do. Look how smart I am. Look how strong I am. Look at what I can accomplish. Look at my musical ability. Look at, look at, look at. And God said, no, no, no. You don't live your life to make you bigger. You live your life to make me bigger. So now also that Christ might be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. The Apostle Paul said, I want to be a little eye in a big hymn. 
He must increase. The greatest born of woman said, he must increase and I must decrease. That's the life I challenge you to live. He that findeth his life shall lose it, but he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Man, the world all around us is going to say, climb the ladder. Be number one. Be the best you can, you can be. And what I'm saying to you in Christ is, no, no, no. You climb down the ladder. You get as low as you can. You wash people's feet. You live for others. And you live like Jesus Christ. And you find out one day, if you grab the lowest rung of the ladder, you find out one day in this world you'll be thought of as a failure. But one day when you stand before Jesus Christ, he's going to take that ladder and turn it around. You grab the lowest rung of that ladder. I promise you, that's the life that means something. The pride of assuming. The pride of arrogance. But you know what the worst pride of all is? Look at verse 17. I'm done. Look at it. The worst pride of all. Therefore, that's a word that means in conclusion. And after a long message like the, the, like the one I'm preaching, you're like, oh, I'm so glad he said in conclusion. <laughs> Which when a preacher says means absolutely nothing. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. Stop for a moment. Look at me, graduates. You know to do good. What's the good we know to do? The will of God. We just learned that. So therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him it is what? You know what the sinful life is? Oh, we always picture the sinful life as the drunken life. We always picture the sinful life as the, as the immoral life. We always picture the sinful life as the, the drug-addicted life. We always picture the addicted life as, as, no, 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 no. The sinful life here is a life that's not following Jesus. And sometimes sin looks really successful. Sometimes sin looks like it makes a lot of money. Sometimes sin looks really, really smart. Sometimes sin gets a lot of accolades and awards. But watch me, the sinful life is a life that's not foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me ask you a question to each one of you. What is your life? Because you got one shot. No one else can live it for you. And Jesus gave it to you. And now you go out and you take what's been invested and you live it back for him. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Our Father, I thank you for these 10. Lord, you took 11, and they changed the world. I pray that you take these 10 and change a part of our world. I pray that as we launch them from this place, as arrows that have been polished and straightened and sharpened. I pray that they would land in places that we cannot go. I pray, pray that they would accomplish things that we cannot accomplish. I pray that they would hit a target that we cannot hit. I pray for each one that of all that you have given us, we would not lose even one. Bless them. Keep them safe and strong. Bless these families, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Amen. Man, wonderful message. Exactly what every one of us needed. Every one of us needed that. Thank you, Pastor Scully. Thank you for sharing the Word of God, sharing from your heart exactly what we need. Well, seniors, this is the moment that you have waited for. As a president and senior administrator of Arlington Baptist School, it is with great pleasure that I, on behalf of the faculty, present to you the members of the Arlington Baptist High School class of 2017. These students have completed the requirements for graduation set forth by the administration, the faculty, and are eligible to receive their diplomas. Therefore, by the authority invested in me by the Arlington Baptist School Board, it is my pleasure to accept these students of the 42nd graduating class. 
as candidates and to award diplomas attesting to their successful completion of the required course of study with all the rights and privileges thereof. At this time, Mrs. Eileen Allen, the home director, and Ms. Marsha Javon, the high school supervisor, will call the names of each member of this year's graduating class to receive their diploma. Parents, listen please. When your child's name is called to receive his or her diploma, please come to the front of the sanctuary right here in the middle and uh, for some, a gift that will be given to you and to say congratulations to your graduate. All right, thank you for doing that and we proceed now. Amari India Chinyegaru. shall lift you up. Yega appreciates the teachers at Arlington Baptist, whom she describes as God-given and ordained. In September, she will attend the University of Baltimore, where she will major in biology. After college, Yega would like to get a job and continue to do what she strives to do every day, live her life fulfilling God's purpose. Amen. Boaz Allen Campbell. Boaz's life verse is 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. <laughs> Boaz appreciates all the people he has met at Arlington Baptist, but he especially values those who have become his friends. His fall destination is Pensacola, Florida, where he will attend the Pensacola Christian College. There he will major in political science with a minor in public administration. After graduating from PCC, Boaz plans to run for an elected office eventually. And buddy, you have my vote. Tyron's life verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Tyron appreciates Arlington Baptist School's desire to see students grow, both spiritually and academically. This fall, he will attend Eastern University in Pennsylvania, where he will major in exercise science. Following his graduation from Eastern, Tyron hopes to own a physical therapy center and aspires to play basketball at the professional level. <laughs> Daniel Alexander Jackson.
Jordan Omar Jones. Jordan's life verse is Titus 3, 5, and 6. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. What Jordan treasures most about Arlington is the school environment and the dedication of its staff. After working during the summer, Jordan will attend Howard Community College, he will be taking general studies course so that he can get a good outlook on college for the first time and discover God's will for his life. Amen. Jordan's aspiration is to live a godly life now and forevermore. Amen. Armar Daryl Edward Lee. Armar's favorite verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Armar appreciates the strong bond that he has with teachers and other Christian brothers and sisters at Arlington Baptist. In the fall, he will attend Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, where he will major in computer science. After college, Armar hopes to work to save money to build his own computer science company. Amen. Amari Janae Roberts. is Romans 1 6 among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ Amari appreciates that her relationship with Christ has grown much stronger while attending Bible classes at Arlington Baptist she has been accepted to Stevenson University here in Maryland where she will major in nursing Amari's future aspirations include working as a labor and delivery nurse in a hospital setting as well as working with organizations such as Doctors Without Borders to help people in third world countries. Camille Amarius Rodney. Camille's life verse is Luke 8, 48. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Camille appreciates that her <laughs> involvement in the home tutorial allowed her the privilege of flexibility in choosing her classes and teachers at Arlington Baptist. She will attend Capital Technology University in the fall and major in computer engineering. Beyond college, she hopes to start a technology company. Darrell Cameron Scott. Darrell's life verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
Jarrell appreciates the help and support that he has received from his associates at Arlington Baptist. He plans to attend Howard, Community Commu Howard Commu County Community College for two years and then transfer to his dream school, George Mason University, where he will major in cybersecurity. His long-range goal is to work for the FBI or the government. Kyle Bruce Taylor. <laughs> Kyle's life verses are Luke 137, for with God nothing be impossible. And John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Kyle appreciates everything about his relationships with teachers and students at Arlington Baptist, and he absolutely loved playing basketball as an Arlington Eagle. He has said, if I could redo fourth through twelfth grades here at Arlington, I gladly would do it all again. Kyle's college choice is yet undecided, but he would like to major in either biology or kinesiology and become a physical therapist. I love you. I love this class. I'm, I'm they're a special group. I'm not. Yeah, I am. I'm emotional. <laughs> and it doesn't bother me. I'm thankful for these young people. I want to tell you something. I will pray for you the rest of your life. And I, and I believe God's going to use you. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for you. Nobody loves you like Jesus loves you. Amen. And I'm thankful that he does. Thank you for letting us be part of your life. I've had the privilege to be with these, this class a lot of different places, seen them serve, seen them have fun. I went to Disney with them. <laughs> and I'm very thankful for you. Parents, thank you for that. Thank you. So, seniors, will you stand? And uh, why don't you come right here and turn? Heavenly Father, thank you for your love to us, and thank you for the fact that we have young people that love you and want to serve you. I ask that you will take this group. I ask that you would use them beyond any way that we would ever dream. That you would do things in their life that they never thought could be done. But you'll do it by your strength, your power, so that you get the glory. I ask that you would protect them. I ask that you would guard them from the evil one. May he never have a foothold in their lives. I ask, Father, that you'll bless their families. May these families have sacrificed so that their son or daughter could be at this school. Bless them, Father. And Father, I want to thank you for them. I thank you for the spirit of this class. And I ask once again, your wonderful hand would be upon them. Thank you for this night that we've had. It's been tremendous been wonderful I believe father that I believe you've been glorified and I believe that's the most important thing once again bless the class of 2017 of Arlington Baptist School in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it amen
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my very distinct privilege to present to you the Arlington Baptist High School Class of 2017 graduates. You got your hats on now? Are we all set? It's very important. All right. You may turn your tassel. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2017 of Arlington Baptist. 